Another edition, MP on the MP. I'm excited today because I have so many beats sitting in my laptop and I'm gonna release them very soon in series of beat tapes. One particular beat, I'm gonna break down today in the lab how I made it, let's go! So shouts to my friend Steph Nava. One day I was bored and I couldn't really get a vibe going or find a sample and I hit her. I was like, I was I asked her, I was like, give me something random to make a beat with. She suggested Michael Franks. The album's called Passion Fruit. And there was a song called When Sly Calls, Don't Touch That Phone. So we're gonna play the song real quick. <laughs> Shouts to my homegirl staff. Shouts to Michael Franks and his bowl of passion fruit that he's eating. He was killing it here. Where's the insert? I just want to show the insert. One day I'm going to make an album where I just kill it with a white t-shirt and jeans. All right, let's get into it. So let's go through all the sounds uh, we have here for this beat. So those are my kick drums, all from Pad Thai, of course. Uh, I, I believe I layered. Yeah. That kick is so noisy, I love it. Um, there's the snare, fucking loud as hell. Symbol. Loud, aggressive, noisy drums on a smooth beat. Why, Marco? Because that's just what you do sometimes. If you got soulful samples or things are a little too mellow and then you put mellow drums, it's just really mellow. But if you put the hardest fucking drums ever on some mellow shit, you keep the hip hop vibe going. And yeah, so you groove with the music, but you're still nodding your head super hard. So. Some might say the drums on this beat are too aggressive for the sounds. I disagree. And uh, let's go through it now. Fender Rhodes. 
two Fender Rhodes samples. Uh, there's my bass. Probably from Pad Thai. That's like the main, like I didn't use a lot from the record, but that was obviously the main sound with the little splices, but I took that sound, the same sound, and I pitched it up 20. So it's like, that's the beat. Yeah, it's like another octave, right? So let's, wait. <laughs> Sometimes I forget uh, what I did that day and I load the beat and I'm like, you were smoking crack that day, bro. That sound that I didn't use. I don't even know what that is. It sounds like a chipmunk. Okay, so those are all the sounds. It's not a lot of stuff going on. Sometimes I'll take little pieces from a record, uh, not necessarily a lot, not even the main melody in the in the sample. Like, there's so much stuff in there I could have probably used, but I kind of just, sometimes I like limiting myself to see what this can come up with, with other sounds, and that's totally one of these beats where I took small elements and built around it with my own library sounds and my drums. Listen to that shit. There's nothing, uh, that is just, uh, kick snare, kick snare all day long with the, uh, with the, uh, where's, we got the cymbal in there? All right. Heavy. So drum programming, the ride cymbal on the one and the two is always a go-to when you need to fill space and you don't want to do tick, 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 hi-hat style and you want things to move, uh, I've become a big fan of it. So has Shy. Uh, yeah. One thing I've learned over the years too is that, you know, layering drums, like you might have a snare that's cool and then once that ride is programmed over it, it completely changes how they hit together and it makes a cool snare an awesome snare. So sometimes you just gotta experiment. Um, so then we have the drums and uh, for this beat straight up, I started with the sample part, which was this. Real simple. Now I probably did it so stabby. Yeah, it wasn't long enough to let it rock out. Plus there's some other percussion happening, so. Very driving. these three rocking so I had that I had the drums and these samples rocking and then when you hear, when you hear. I added that in randomly Ok, 
Okay, let's see what the next track was. That's how I played on the record, but I slowed it down here. So here's where a nice layer was added to the beat. It was it was rocking, it was dope, but then I wanted to make it a bit more musical. So I have this Fender Rhodes sound. Two of them. Now here's where it gets tricky. I used the 16 levels function on the MPC 2000 XL to get a different note of this Rhodes. So This doesn't always work with the XL because for whatever reason, some sounds sound less modulated than others. And this one in the mix didn't sound terrible. I could get away with playing those two notes in the mix of the beat and it didn't sound uh, fake or modulated. It actually sounded cool. So I was able to play different road sounds. It sounds so right now. And I went down. Baseline time and my baseline was pretty cool. I actually realized I had it kind of low in the mix, but it was it was nice So I'm gonna bring it up a little louder now And I left it way Pluckier and mid-rangey than I usually would just because I feel like the samples had a lot of low end in them Maybe in the mix I would change it. I don't know but There's my bass sound so funny because the original song is called when sly calls don't touch that phone so it makes you think who is this guy sly and why why are you not picking up when he calls and then it made me think it's kind of similar to when shiloh calls me it's like when shy calls sometimes i don't answer because uh you know you just don't know what's gonna happen so it's always a dice roll so when sly calls turned into this beat right here called no phone zone shouts to steph nava for putting me onto the sample uh, this is MP on the MP, and hope you learned something today, and look out for all the B-tapes dropping soon. MarcoPoloBeats.com, drum majors in a built-in. Peace. Dick. <laughs>